Okay. So to summarize what I just said so far, over here you can write down permutation we say the order matters and that's what we've been doing up until now we counted it a b as different from b a for a combination we don't care so let's try and give you a good example of the difference between the two if five sprinters compete in a race, how many different ways can the medals for first, second, and third place be awarded? Well, first place, second place, third place. How many choices do I have for the first place medal? Five. How many choices do I have for the second place medal? Four. How many choices do I have for the third place medal? You'll notice when I wasn't sure I fell back on the fundamental counting principle, but now that I see 5, 4, 3, I recognize that's actually 5, P, 3, which might be a faster way to do it on my calculator. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do this on my calculator. It's 20 times 3. David, what's the answer? 60. At the Olympics, does the order that you finish matter? Is a gold different from a silver, different from a bronze? Absolutely. This is an example of a permutation of five objects taken three at a time. However, what if you're at the Olympic trials? Now, at the Olympic trials, the top three advance to the Olympics. You don't care whether you finish first or second or third. You just want to make sure you're part of the group. That would be an example of a situation where the order did not matter. In fact, if five sprinters compete in a race and the fastest three qualify for the relay team, how many different relay teams can be formed? You can visualize the five sprinters below. Three will qualify, two will not. You can kind of think of this as saying, I'll have three yeses and two noes. Why, that looks like a word. How many letters long is that word, grand total? How many Ys? How many Ns? What's the answer? Uh, 120 divided by 6 times 2. 120 divided by 12. I think the answer is 10, but double check me. Is it 10? And I think I mentioned to you already last day, the reason we start with words is, if we're clever, we can turn a lot of questions into words. Does the order of the three matter here? No. This is an example of a combination of five objects taken three at a time. And here is really the difference. Look up. That's the permutation. That's the combination. Permutation. Right? Because if I went 5P3, or 5 times 4 times, that is 5 times 4 times 3 right there, because the 2 and the 1 would cancel. Permutation, combination. And that's how we're going to have to tweak our factorial formula for our formula sheet as well. So, an unordered arrangement of distinct objects is called a combination. And the number of combinations of n distinct objects taken r at a time is, we write it as n c r, for choose or combination, and it's n factorial all over n minus r factorial. Now that's the permutation part of the equation. That's this part. What's the 3? What's the 3? 
What's the three R factorial in the front on the bottom? It's N factorial all over R factorial bracket N minus R factorial. And if you look at your formula sheet, or if you look on the inside cover of your workbook, that also is on your formula sheet. Yes? In fact, it's, uh, it should be right next to the permutation equation. Yes? Okay. Really, the trickier part is trying to determine, is this a choose combination or is this a pick permutation? But I've tried to do with my little model up here with my individually smacking Vitaly around, I, I, I tried to give you a visualization. So, how many different committees of three people can be formed from seven people? If we're just forming a committee, have they mentioned anything here in this sentence like it might matter when you get picked? This is going to be seven, choose three. And now I have no idea what the answers are. You are going to have to go to your calculator. Let's go find where it is. Seven, math, left arrow. Oh, there's the choose, option number three, three. Seven, choose three is 35. Now compare question A with question B. How many different committees of three people can be formed from seven people if the first person serves as the chairperson, the second as the treasurer, and the third as the secretary? Does this suggest that the order makes a difference? Yeah, if you're picked first, what are you? Pres uh, chairperson. If you're picked second, what are you? Treasurer. If you're picked third, you're the secretary. So here... I'm either going to go 7 permutate 3, or I could fall back on my 7, 6, 5. In some ways, I have to be honest, Megan, I almost prefer this because I can usually do these in my head. It's 30 times 7. 210. Yes, someone will double check, but it's 210. By the way, are there more permutations or are there more combinations? There's also kind of a built-in error check. If you get a combination that's bigger than a permutation, probably you've messed up somewhere. C. I like 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 C. If the group of seven people consists of three males and four females, so now we've got subgroups, how many different committees of three people can be formed if you want one male and two females. Looks tough, but surprisingly easy if I give you one more tool. So what are the tools I've given you so far this year? I've given you the uh, drawing a blank and the Scrabble grab bag for permutations. The best tool I can give you for combinations is to draw a bucket. Put your pencil down for a second. And watch if we draw this properly, how easily the equation is going to come out. So over here in the margin, I'm going to draw a bucket, and I notice there are two groups, males and females. Don't write this down yet. Watch me draw it, and then write it yourself, and that way you see it twice. How many males grand total before we start? Three. How many females grand total before we start? Four. How many males on the committee? I draw a little arrow, I put a one right there. How many females? Two. So I set it up like that, it takes one second to draw, and here's the equation. From three males, choose one, and from four male, females, choose two. You see how it pops out of there? That's not bad, that's what I stole. I think I mentioned at the very beginning of this, there was a prof from North Van who did this in instructing us. If you ever go to Capilano College and you have Ted Bentley, he's brilliant. He's the, one of the few math university props that I've seen that explains things at a high school level and explains it well. When he showed me that, I was, I got my hope. Oh, four aces, choose two. Four kings, choose two. Uh, that's four and four is eight, 52 minus eight. Uh, 44 other cards, choose one. 
there's a full house with two kings and two aces. We're, we'll, we'll get there, but it's very easy to set up card questions then too. What's the answer? Eighteen, is it? All right. Do you remember when we did some factorials? I said, out of laziness, because it's a lot of typing, it was worth memorizing two factorial, three factorial, and four factorial. Can you find for me five choose zero? What's that? What's five choose zero? Can you go second function enter, change the five to a six, what's six choose zero? I'm going to memorize that anything choose zero is one. Elizabeth, can you give me some help? I'm going to memorize that anything choose zero is one. And that, because a lot of the time you're going to have a choose zero in your equation, but you're not going to type it. Can you find what's five choose one? Five. What's six choose one? Go second function, enter, change the five to a six. What's seven choose one? I'm going to memorize that n choose 1 is just plain n because that's way faster to type. Do you have to, Nicole? Nope. Will you want to after your fingers start bleeding? Yes. D. D. Read D very carefully to yourself, please. And what's the difference between C and D? There's one key phrase that makes it a completely different question. At least. And it's so important, Jen, I'm going to underline it in red. The fancy term for this, we say that this is looking at different cases. And to solve these what we have to do is we have to list each case. By the way, did you hear what I said back here? I said one male from three and two females from four. What does the word and mean in combinatorics? Multiply. Okay. If we have at least one male, what are the possibilities? We can have one male or two males. Or three males, or, okay, I can't have four, only three guys. Okay, those are the three possibilities. Do you know what or means in combinatorics? Now, one male we already did. Three choose one, four choose two. Or, can you look at this bucket and modify it for two males without drawing it? From three males, choose how many? Two. So from four me females, choose how many? One. Or can you look at this bucket without redrawing it and modify it for three males? From three males, choose three. And from four females, Choose. By the way, are you starting to see why if you were typing this, you'd put a 3 there, a 4 there, and a 1 there? I, actually, you wouldn't. You know what you would do? Look up, look up, look up. I would go one term at a time. I would go 3 math factorial uh, combinatorics, choose 1 times 4 math, left arrow, choose 2, and I would... Ah, choose two, and I would write down that plus. And then what I would do is just go second function, enter, change the one to a two, change the two to a one, and I would go 12 plus. And then I would go second function, enter, change that to a three, Change that to a zero. By the way, what is four choose zero? One. What do you get? Oh, 
Not only is 4 choose 0, 1. You know what 4 choose 4 is? 1. So anything choose 0 or anything choose itself is 1. I actually knew this one was going to work out to 1. The answer is 18 plus 12 plus 1. In your head, please. 31? Yes? That's how we're going to do cases. And I like this question. I like this question. I like this question, too. Classic provincial exam written question on this unit is a committee question. They used to do card questions, but apparently a religious group complained and felt that that was inappropriate. I guess there are some religions that have issues with playing cards. So the odds are very good, no pun intended with cards and odds, but the odds are very good. It won't be a card question on your provincial exam. But I'm going to do it. I like it. If I offend you, so be it. Example two. Example two says, evaluate that. Can my calculator go 100 factorial? But I can't help noticing, does the bottom add to 100? This is actually 100 choose 3. Or it's also 100 choose 3. 97. What's the answer? What is it? Sorry, what's the answer? Read it to me, please, Brandon, one digit at a time. One. 161,700. By the way, why do both of these have the same answer? And you'll find 100 choose 4 is the same as 100 choose 96, or 10 choose 3 is the same as 10 choose 7. Why are they the same answer? Easy. Can the five of you stand up, please? Brandon and I are going to form a group of two. If I form a group of two, stay there. If I form a group of two, am I not automatically forming a group of... In other words, you know what 5 two, choose 2 is? The same as 5 choose 2. I can't form a group of 4 without forming a group of 1. So if you notice, 5 choose 1 will be the same as 5 choose 4. Or 10 choose 6 will be the same as 10 choose 4. Or 25 choose 8. 25 choose 8 will also be the same as 25 choose uh, 17. Okay? That can also be a time saver if you're writing out case questions, because you may have already done some of the same numbers already. Thanks. B. Solve this. Okay. If this was multiple choice, Nick, you know what I would do? I would quickly try all four answers. But... It's probably going to be written. I told you there's going to be some kind of factorial question to solve on your test. On your formulas sheet, what is n choose 2? If we plug in n for n and 2 for r, I think we get this. n factorial all over 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial. Is that correct? Did I plug it in correctly? By the way, what is 2 factorial? 2. So on my next line, I'm just going to evaluate this. It's not that the exclamation mark vanished. It's that I went 2 factorial is 2 times 1. It's 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my numbers to one side. So I'm going to take this 2 and I'm going to move it over here by multiplying by 2. I'm going to say this is the same as n factorial all over n minus 2 factorial equals 42. Okay, so I said 2 factorial is 2, and I multiplied by 2 to get the n's on the one side, like we did with logs. We said, get all your x's to one side here. Get all your n's to one side. Now what? Which one's bigger, top or bottom? The top. Let's expand it. This is going to be n 
times n minus 1 times n minus 2. Ooh, I'm going to stop there, factorial, all over n minus 2 factorial. Why am I going to stop there? Can I cancel? It is factored. Ha ha. What kind of an equation is this? It's a quadratic. You know how I know? There's going to be an n squared. In fact, when I go chunk, chunk, I'm going to get n squared minus n. Can I do this in one step? Minus 42 equals 0. Did I lose you there, or is that okay? Because I'm running out of room here. Oh, Sab is way ahead of us. Sab, it factors into what? Minus 7 plus 6. What are my roots? n equals 7, negative 6. Which one's extraneous? You can't have negative 6 objects. Okay. Lovely question there. Let's play cards. So we're not calculating odds yet. All we're doing is calculating how many. A standard deck, and I need to explain this because some of you may not be familiar with playing cards. A standard deck has four suits, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades, and 13 cards in each suit. So how many cards are there grand total? Let's make a little note here. 52 cards. How many black cards are there? More specific, how many black cards are there? You know, Mr. Duick, you should really write that in black. 26 black and 26 red. And then the other one they occasionally ask is, how many face cards are there? Now, what's a face card? Okay, a face card is a jack, queen, or king. One of those three. So how many are there? Twelve face cards. All right. How many different five-card hands can be formed. Cards are combinations. It's from 52 cards, choose five. So we're not playing seven card Texas Hold'em right now. We're going five cards. And the reason we're going five cards is crunch that. The numbers get big. Seven would be worse. With five cards, how many five card hands are there? What is 52 choose five? Matt, read me the digits one at a time. Just about, is that right? Just about 2.6 million different five-card hands. So whoever was saying, oh, is this a good method for counting cards? Well, I guess if you're a math mathematical savant and can do huge math in your head, sure. B. How many different five-card hands can be formed that consist of all hearts? I'm going to argue that this is the same as the guys and girls question, except here we're going to have hearts and non-hearts. I'm going to draw a bucket. And I'm going to have hearts and I usually just write others. How many hearts are there in the deck? Not oof. How many hearts are there in the deck? Easy. 13. How many others are left over in the deck then? Do the arithmetic. 39. How many hearts do I want to choose? 5. How many others do I want to choose? 0. Can you see what my equation is going to be? 13. Choose 5. And 39. Choose 5. Zero. By the way, what is anything choose zero? 
So I'm not going to type that on my calculator, but I almost always write it for the symmetry of the bucket so I can see what's going on. Thirteen. Choose five. Twelve eighty seven. Put your pencils down. We would call that a heart flush. Not a bad hand. How many different suits are there? So if you want to know the number of flushes grand total, times by four. If you want to know the odds of getting a flush, divide that by two, five, nine, eight, nine, six, zero, and that's the odds of getting a flush. Okay, that's how they calculate them. The only problem with this is there is a special flush that's even better than a regular flush, a straight flush. So really, what we should have done is figured out how many straight flushes there were, subtracted those from the twelve eighty-seven times four, and figured out the odds of getting a straight flush, and then figure out the odds of getting a normal flush. But anyways, this is how they do it. How many different five uh, C? How many different five-card hands can be formed that consist of all face cards? Bucket. Face cards and, and I usually abbreviate others as O-T-H because I get tired of writing out the word others. How many face cards are in the deck? Twelve. How many others are in the deck? Do the arithmetic. Forty. How many face cards do we want? It says all, so five. How many others do we want then? Zero. What's the equation? Twelve choose five times forty choose zero, which is really just twelve choose five. Doug, what'd you get? I know. Pick up your calculator. You want to try this? I don't know where you are, but it's not here. Help me out. I know, you're tired. Ah! No, nothing. Got Kelvin. What is 12 choose 5? I heard two different answers. Sorry, what? Oh, 793. I'm sorry. 792? By the way, what if instead of all, what if I'd said four face cards and one other? What would the equation be? 12 choose 4. 40, choose one. This bucket, very flexible, which is, when I saw that, I was like, oh, wish my prof had taught me that in college, because that would have made life easier. Sorry? How many different five-card hands can be formed? Three hearts, two spades. Okay. This bucket is going to have three sections. Hearts, spades and others, because some cards are neither hearts nor spades. How many spades are there in the deck? 13. How many hearts are there in the deck? 13. How many others are there in the deck? 26. How many hearts do I want? 3. How many spades? 2. How many others? None. Can you see the equation? 13 choose 3 and, that's 3 hearts, 13 choose 2, 3 hearts, and 3 spades, and no others. That was Jordan's ringtone, wasn't it? Oh, no? Okay. It's okay. Are you, just for curiosity, who here is a machine gun sneezer? So who here sneezes mul multiples? They're out there. My little brother is like always six to eight in a row. I've always wondered, is that genetic or is that learned behavior? Anyways, just wondering. What do you get? David, read me the digits. Two, two, three, zero, eight. Is that right? Okay. And again, you've heard me say this already, but it bears repeating. There's no way you could count those by hand. We're counting without counting. 
E and F are almost identical questions. What's the difference between F and E? At least, so F is going to be cases. Let's draw our bucket. I'll draw my bucket over here this time. So F, we're talking about hearts. Do they mention any other groups? Nope. Then we'll call the rest others. How many hearts are there? 13. How many others are there? 39. And we want exactly three hearts. Oh, so how many others will we have to pick by default then? Two. So this is going to be 13 choose 3 and 39 choose 2. You get 20, uh, 211, 926? Yep. 211,926. Now, as soon as they give me cases, because, Jen, I've done these sloppily wrong so often, I have a couple of Mr. Duick being hyper paranoid. First of all, I underline the case because sometimes I've read it wrong. Sometimes I've read it as at most, which is a completely different question from at least, and then I'm going to list the cases. So at least three hearts means, what's the minimum number of hearts I can have? Three, and I draw a line underneath that, and then I write the word, or, what's the next possible case? At least three hearts. What else could qualify for at least three hearts? Four, or five. Can I have six? Nope, we're only picking five cards. Now, we already have three. It's 13, choose three, and 39, choose two. But I find, Sav, by setting it up nice and wide and spaced like this, I can usually just drop the plus sign, and I can look at this in my bucket and figure out what this is going to be. Four hearts, what would that be? What choose what times what choose what? 13, choose four, and... 39, choose 1. Or 5 hearts, what would that be? 13, choose 5, and 39, choose 0. Then, Elizabeth, to minimize my typing, now I've already done this first one. It's 211926. This is where I don't do this all at once. I go case by case because if I just go second function enter, I can change the 3 to a 4, and I can change the 2 to a 1. Way less typing. 27,885. And I go second function enter again, and this is going to be 13 choose 5. And 39 choose 0, and I get 1287, which is the number that we had earlier for the number of ways to get a heart flush. And what am I going to do with these three numbers? Add them up. Plus 27885 plus 2111926. I find that's about the least amount of typing and still have good bang for my buck. 241098. Turn in your workbook, please, to page 397. Whoop. Page 397. Doug is back. Woohoo! So, combinations we've already talked about. So, turn to page 398. They're walking you through the combination derivation, which is lovely, but we've already done that. So, page 399, what we are going to do is with our highlighter or a pen or something like that, say, hey, here's the equation. Now, in North America, we write NCR like this. In Europe, 
do I have my any German exchange students in this class? Uh, they write NCR as N over R in giant brackets. So I've showed you that just in case when you're in university, you have a European prof or whatever. Both are accepted as notations. But it's N factorial over R factorial, N minus R factorial. So, Lotto 649. You choose six numbers from 49. How many numbers would you have to make up to guarantee a winning ticket? From 49 numbers, choose six. And what does that mean? It means if the prize is more than $14 million, it's worth doing. Or is it? What's the risk you're taking? If you buy one ticket of every number, if you invest $14 million, what's the risk you're taking? Yeah. If someone else also picks that number, you got to split the prizes. That's a pretty big fake crunch. Okay, if the prize is around 50 million, but the problem is the bigger the prize, what happens around Canada? More tickets are sold. The odds of someone picking your same number increases. This is why no one does this. It's not mathematically feasible. Uh, 13983816. But basically, the odds of winning Lotto 649 are about 1 in 14 million. You kind of wondered, right? Okay. Example 3 says we're going to have an athletic council. We're going to have seven members. I'm going to underline the number seven because they wrote it out and I might miss that if I'm in a rush map. We have nine males, six females. The subcommittee has to have three females, so that also means we have to have four males if there's seven members. Skip A, skip B. How many ways can I have the subcommittee bucket? Males, females. How many males are there grand total? Nine. How many females grand total? Six. Four of them have to be on. Three of them have to be on. Nine, choose four. And <coughs> six, choose three. <coughs> What's the answer? You know what? I'm going to go second function enter, second function enter, second function enter. Hey, that'll work. Delete nine, choose four. Delete six, choose three. That's still less typing, I think. Uh, 2520? Is it 2520? Okay. All right, mini curveball number one, D. In how many ways can the subcommittee be chosen if Bruce, the football coach, must be included? How many ways are there to pick Bruce? One. And, okay, how many males are now left in the bucket? Let's assume Bruce is a male, thank you. So, how many males are now left in the bucket? Eight. Choose. Now, we've already put one male on the committee. How many males are we now going to choose at random on the committee? Three. And how many females? Six. Choose. Still going to have three females. 
So if they give you one restriction, it's actually pretty easy. Pull it out, do it first, and then deal with the rest of your bucket. Uh, what's the answer? Oh, you know what? I'm just going to go like this. Make that a 3. Make that an 8. Uh, 11.20. Turn the page. Okay. Cards we've already done, so as much as I'd love to do number four as a nerd, we're going to skip it. And we're actually going to turn to page 403. Questions with at most, at least, etc. So on your own right now, try 1C. I'm going to freeze the screen. See if you can do this one. I think those are my cases. Is that right? At least one female means one or two or three or four or five because it does say five council members right there. All right. Oops, I missed one. That was silly. See what I did. That was silly. I made a silly mistake. I gotta fix this on the video. Four, five, choose two, six, choose three, four, five, choose one, six, choose four, four, five, choose zero, six, choose. Did you all get an expression that looks like this? You get 5 choose 4, 6 choose 1, plus 5 choose 3, 6 choose 2, plus 5 choose 2, 6 choose 3, plus 5 choose 1, 6 choose 4, plus 5 choose 0, 6 choose 5? Shortcuts, look up. What's anything choose 0? What's 6 choose 5? I'll give you a hint. It's the same as 6 choose 1. This whole thing is going to work out to six. Um, what's six choose one? Six. It's also the same as six choose five. What's six choose one? Six. What's five choose four? That's also five because it's the same as five choose one. Remember when I separated the groups? This whole thing works out to 30. It's a little less typing if you spot stuff like that. Would I do that on a test? Probably not, Jasmine. I'd type it on a test. Would I try some shortcuts in my homework? Yeah. All right, let's type this one. 
five. Oh, you know what, Mr. Duick? Just go second function, enter, and change the equation that you have. Five, choose three. Oh, geez, this almost is already there. 150 plus. Make that a two. Make that a three. 200 plus. Make that a one, make that a four, 75. Okay, 30 plus 150 plus 200 plus 75 plus six. I get 461, anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Almost done, Dina. Um, what about cards? If I said at least one red card and we're picking five cards, what are the cases for at least one red card? One red card or two or three or four or five. That's a lot of work. I am going to do B, at most two kings. Okay. Here's my bucket. Kings and others. How many kings are there in the deck? Four. How many others? 48. At most two kings means what cases? Two or one or... Okay. Two or one or zero. Sorry, I have no shortcut for cases. It's just you got to do them each individually. <coughs> two car, two kings would look like this. Two and three. There's my five cards. So two would be four, choose two, 48, choose three. Or let's see if we can fill in the rest without redrawing the bucket. Or by the way, look up. Easy way to do this is to now go cross that out, cross that out. 1 and 4. Now you've got your new equation. 4 choose 1, 48 choose 3, or cross that out, 0, cross that out, 5. Oh, 4 choose 0, 48 choose 5. What's the answer? One oh three seven seven six four <coughs> I made a typo here. This should be a four in my writing, shouldn't it? Yeah. Make that a four. Make that a one. 778320, holy smokes. Or make that a five. Make that a none. 1712304. 1712304. Plus 778320. Plus one oh three seven seven six two five nine four four zero zero. What if they said three or more kings. That would mean three or four or five. There would be a shortcut. I would say, well, there's... Sorry? I would go 52, choose five. That's how many different hands there are. Here's how many have two or less.
That's how many have three or more. That's a short way if they ask you a part B, you can use the complement. Oh, and is three or four kings a good hand? That means three of a kind or four of a kind. There shouldn't be very many of those. It should be a tough one to get. All right. Homework. Turn back, please. To page three, sorry, page 400 and, <coughs> well, page 400. Number one, number two. Pete's Perfect Pizza Company, okay. So number one, number two. Five, because it's basketball. Uh, seven. Eleven. Then we're going to skip ahead to page four oh six. Yes, you are correct. How about uh, number two? Number three. Number six, movies, sure. <coughs> we'll pause there. Tomorrow's lesson is much, much shorter. <laughs> 